In this movie, we'll learn how to use Live's MIDI capabilities to play its built-in software instruments, or any VST or audio unit instruments that are installed on your computer. Live's instruments and effects are accessible through the device browser. Click on the device browser selector to bring it into view. The instruments and effects in the device browser are grouped into folders. To open and close any folder, click on the small triangle to the left of its name. You can also use your computer keyboard's arrow keys for quick navigation whenever the browser is selected. Let's open the Instruments folder to access Live's built-in software instruments. The contents of this folder will vary depending on which Ableton products you have enabled, but it will at least contain the Impulse and Simpler instruments, as well as a folder titled Instrument Rack. Let's load an Instrument Rack, a set of devices and controls that have been grouped together into a single device. When you open the Instrument Rack folder, you'll find several subfolders which organize the presets into broad categories. Open any of these subfolders and pick out a preset. Instrument and Effect Rack presets use the browser icon. To load an Instrument Rack, drag its preset onto a MIDI track. You can also drag a preset onto an empty space in the set, which creates a track for you. After releasing the mouse button, you'll see the new instrument rack appear in the track view at the bottom of the application window. In order to play the software instrument, we first need to arm the track that we placed it in. Arming the track accomplishes two things. It allows the track to receive MIDI notes from an external MIDI keyboard, and it record enables the track, allowing you to record what you play at any time. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard available, you can use your computer's keyboard instead. To do this, Make sure that the computer MIDI keyboard is enabled. Every instrument rack features a set of eight macro controls that alter the characteristics of its sound. You can adjust an instrument's macro controls as you play and listen to how each one changes the sound in a different way. Using macro controls is best when they've been MIDI mapped to the knobs or faders of an external control surface. You can save the instrument's current settings at any time by clicking the Save Preset button in the rack's title bar. Your self-made presets will now be accessible through the device browser and can be loaded into your other live sets. By pressing the Hot Swap button, we've created a temporary link between the browser and the device in the track view. Selecting a preset then hitting the return or enter key on your keyboard will replace the previously loaded instrument with the new preset. If the preset belongs to another instrument, like Impulse, Live even exchanges the device for you. You can press the escape button to exit hot swap mode. The Live browser also offers a convenient search function that will find presets by keyword. For example, click on the browser search button, then type in bass and hit the enter or return key to list all base presets in Lies library. Lies built-in instruments and effects can be complemented by third-party plugins in VST or audio unit formats. To insert a plugin instrument, first open the plugin browser using this selector. Instrument plugins can be differentiated from effect plugins by the tiny piano keys that occupy the lower half of their browser icon. Let's select an instrument and drag it into a MIDI track. The plugin's custom editor window will open automatically. Let's take a quick look at how to record your performance into the arrangement view. It's important to record in sync so everything will later play in sync. The easiest way to record in sync is to use the built-in metronome. Press the space bar to start playback, then adjust the metronome's volume using the Master Track's Q volume control. Press the space bar again to stop. Our MIDI track is already record enabled. We activated its arm button earlier so that Live would respond to MIDI notes. Let's press the control bar's stop button twice to reset the arrangement position to the beginning of the set. Now we'll press the adjacent Global Record button. Finally, we'll press the control bar's play button, or use the space bar, to begin recording. As recording progresses, you'll see a new MIDI clip being created in the track. Now we'll press the stop button twice to reset the arrangement position to the beginning of the set. Then listen to our performance by pressing the play button.
There are many things you can do with your newly recorded clip. You can grab clips by their title bars to move them to different positions. You can drag their edges to change their length or cut and paste them. To see the contents of your new clip, double click its title bar. The MIDI notes contained within the clip will appear in the clip view at the bottom of the application window. This is where you can edit MIDI notes. To toggle between the track view, where the instrument and the effects reside, and the clip view, which shows the MIDI clip's details, press the Shift and Tab keys together. The MIDI editor has its own beat time ruler, which can be used for zooming and scrolling horizontally, just like in the arrangement. You can also click and drag on the area to the left of the piano keys to zoom and scroll the editor vertically. If you disable the draw mode switch, you can select and move notes using your mouse. You can select and move groups of notes by first dragging a selection box around them. Each note has its own velocity marker at the bottom of the MIDI editor. This marker indicates the intensity with which each note is played. Velocities can also be changed by clicking and dragging. We've learned how to select sounds, play software instruments, and record MIDI notes in this movie. Using the principles you've learned, you could go on recording adding any number of tracks with each containing a different set of sounds.